do our first real exercise here in Course 171. We need to go ahead and set up our system to install SQL Server. So we will do this over two exercises. This exercise is the setting up the prerequisites, getting everything in place. We'll come back on the next video and we'll go through and we'll actually install SQL Server 2012 twice. We'll install a default instance and a named instance. Okay, with this video, there are a couple of different files. So find wherever you have the video, wherever you launch the video from, and look for these two files here. So one is the PDF file. That's the exercise itself. This contains all of the steps and everything you need to perform the exercise. And inside the exercise steps, we refer to this other text file, this sample documentation. Okay. So I don't know if you've done exercises with me before or not, but the way I write exercises is that everything in the exercise should be completely contained within the PDF. You should not need to watch this video. Okay, ideally, you load up the PDF, you perform the steps, everything works like the steps say, you have all the instructions you need, and you don't have any reason to come watch the video, okay? So in the future, that's kind of how the exercises are going to work. You just, you don't need the video unless you actually need to troubleshoot something or you have trouble with something or you just want to learn a little bit more about a topic. Because here's what happens in the video. In the video, I say, okay, now you go do the exercise. And then we come back, kind of wipe away. You're supposed to pause the video, go do the exercise. And then when we come back, I do the exercise. And I talk about, you know, a lot of times people will have trouble here. Or I've seen people have trouble with this particular section as well. So make sure you do X, Y, and Z. And hey, here's something that you maybe need to focus on. Okay, so there is value in watching the video if this is all completely new to you. But I do tell people if you know if you were able to go through the PDF steps and you had no problems, you had no real questions, no reason to watch the video. Okay, so go ahead and launch the PDF here. Uh, it will tell you, like I said, it gives you everything. Thanks reader. Um, so this is exercise number one. Exercises are numbered sequentially in the chapter. So, you know, there's, if a chapter has exercises, not all do, it will always have an exercise one. Okay. So there's not just a you know, number incrementing all the time. Okay. So what we're doing is we're making pre-installation decisions and we're documenting those decisions. Okay? This is going to be very, very important. Okay, so I, this is actually a pretty long uh, set of instructions, as is the next videos, okay? This video should take you a little bit of time. If you just go do this by yourself, I'm guessing 10 minutes, 15 minutes worth of time, okay? Uh, for this particular video, and then probably another 10 to 15 for the next video, okay? And I did ask, please don't skip this exercise. <laughs> uh, we will refer to the steps that you do in this exercise throughout the course. So if you just kind of drop in at, you know, exercise one in chapter six, it's going to have a prerequisite. You have already completed exercise one in chapter three. So you need to have completed really exercises one and two in this chapter to do the other exercises in the course. Okay. Uh, has a listing. Here's the files, right? And I do have my little red flag. I always have to remind you, and I will remind you again, you know, don't play on the company production servers. Uh, quickest way to get fired as a DBA is to start installing a bunch of junk that you downloaded from the internet and uh, start playing and adding new accounts with almost no passwords and uh, you don't want to do that. So make sure that the instance, uh, the server that you're going to be playing on is one that you have complete control over uh, and it's not a production server. Okay. Okay. So really that's about it. You're supposed to just kind of scroll in. You go through step one. You see how, I mean, we kind of talk about, all, I mean, it's, there's a lot of detail here. Read the detail perform the steps. I do try to highlight and bold uh, the different things that kind of should jump out at you in the various steps. So it's your turn. Pull up the exercise. Try to do it by yourself. If you're completely successful, don't come back. I'll see you in the next video. Go. <music>
Okay, so since you're back with me, I'm assuming one of two things. You either uh, had some trouble and you kind of want to jump to the spot where you had trouble. Uh, if that's the case, you can kind of scroll forward in the video until you see me uh, talking about a particular section. I will say a lot of times, even though I might write it out as step one, two, three, four, five, six in the exercise, when we actually go do the demo and I show you, I'll do steps one, two, three, four, five, and six without flipping back over to the exercises. I'm not necessarily going to say, okay, step one and flip over and show you. And then step two and flip over and show you. I might kind of batch them together. So just kind of watch uh, for that. Uh, and then number two, I'm assuming like we kind of talked about, you just want a little bit more background or uh, possibly just a, a little more reinforcement of the material, okay? So just kind of laid out in step number one, a couple of the requirements here, uh, made sure that you have uh, a good environment set up. I'm a big fan of VMware. That would be my favorite. That would be my choice. Uh, I like to play on VMware Workstation. Uh, I think on every laptop, every Windows laptop I've ever had, I've put uh, either VMware or Oracle Virtual Box, uh, and sometimes on, or uh, both. Um, Microsoft Hyper-V. Uh, this is more along the server side. Um, it's, uh, it's okay. I, I think that the uh, new versions, 3.0 and so forth, uh, are really, really, really good. Um, the Windows Azure is Microsoft's cloud-hosted uh, version, so they really want to uh, sell that and kind of get you going with those. Uh, we will do more on virtualization in Chapter 11, so it's not my role, I think, here uh, to teach you uh, how to install an operating system on those things. We're just here to talk about installing SQL Server, okay? Uh, so you've got your your server up, you've got your computer, okay? Make sure you're logged into it with the server with an account that's part of the local administrators. Now, I logged into my computer as the domain administrator into this particular computer. And I did that so that I could add the account Scott to the local administrators group, okay? Uh, this should be a core skill that you have. Uh, you'll notice in the instructions here that uh, I didn't really say, here's how to do that. You should know how to do that. Or you should go ask your domain administrator and say, can you do this for me? Okay? Or your network administrator, can you show me how to do this? This is something that a SQL Server DBA is, should be able to do, to be able to add an account to the local administrators group. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that in case you ran into a little bit of uh, a spot of bother, as they say. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, you can access this a bunch of different ways. You can go to your start menu. Uh, you can go to your administrative tools there. And then you can go to your computer management. Uh, or you could go through your control panel. And you can go to administrative tools that way. And then you, in the end, you're getting to computer management either way. Okay, so you want this computer management. We go ahead and we bring that up. And let's kind of wait too long for that. And what we're looking for here is the local users and groups, and we're looking to see who the users are on this particular machine. Okay, um, and, and really we're looking at the groups here. Here's our local administrators group. It doesn't have the prefix local. It's just the administrators group on the local machine, right? So you flip down here to groups, you double click on administrators. Uh, you'll notice that the learn it first domain administrators, the domain administrators of the domain, are also administrators of the local computer. Okay, it's probably the way it is in your environment as well. So now you just want to add your account. You might not be on a domain. I kind of take the assumption that because you're just building a uh, simple server here for playing in a, uh, a DBA course, that you didn't bother building a domain and now have a domain computer. Like that was probably a little bit too much uh, work, too much sugar for a dime uh, to kind of set that up there. So I'm assuming that you don't have a domain. Okay, so you need to make sure that your location is set up correct. Uh, so I'm going to change my location because it's defaulting to my domain. And I'm going to set it up to the, uh, well, actually, I, I will. I'll log in as my domain account here. So Learn It First Local. And Scott is an account on the Learn It First domain. So I want to make Learn It First backslash Scott a local administrator. Okay? I say OK. It goes ahead and puts in the fully qualified domain name. And I say Go. Okay. 
So Scott is now a domain administrator and I can safely log out and I'm going to move, uh, move this to, oh, just, uh, I'll create a folder called exercises and I'll create a, I missed my little toolbar that said new folder up there. I hate having to do three clicks for things, something I used to could do in one. Uh, chapter 03, and we'll put it in there, okay? Because what I'm actually going to do now, I'm going to log out as the administrator, and I'm going to log in as Scott. So I'll see you here in just a second. So we're logged in as Scott up here. Um, the only reason I kind of wipe there is just to avoid the time it takes to log in and I'll log out here. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull up those exercises again. That's why I moved them here so it wouldn't be in the profile of the domain administrator's desktop. I wouldn't have been able to access it, right? So I can go ahead and pull that up and I probably have to respond to the, you know, I thought I'd have to respond to their license agreement or something here. I'll scroll down to my spot and here I am. Uh, run Windows Update. I've already done it. You can do that on your own. Review the information below. Verify you have .NET Framework. You know, that's all uh, pretty easy to do. A couple of different ways that you could do this. Um, you can go over to your control panel, and you can go to the Turn Feature, the Programs and Features. And depending on your operating system, you may actually see it showing up in the list of programs. Or you may actually have to go over here and turn Windows features on or off to turn on or turn off the .NET Framework 3.5. So you can go to your local machine. You know, I don't know what you have, which machine that you have. Everybody's is going to be a little bit different. Um, SQL Server will tell us later on when we go through the setup if we don't have it. And it will give us a link uh, to install it. Uh, so it's okay. I also have... In the PDF, you can click on the links right there and go directly, you know, go download these or uh, put them in right there. Uh, you know, making sure you have PowerShell installed. If you are on Windows 2012, you, it already comes with PowerShell. Same thing with Windows 2008 R2. That comes with PowerShell 2.0. Uh, so you can, if you don't have PowerShell, you can install it. You can actually determine whether you have PowerShell by hitting the little Windows key and the letter R to prompt you, right? So you can go to the run prompt, you know, go to your start menu, you can go to run as well if you are on Windows 7. Uh, and then you can just type in CMD, okay? Uh, to give you to the DOS prompt or the command shell and just type in PowerShell. And if you have PowerShell installed, it will either launch in a separate window or it will show you in this little PowerShell window, depending again on your operating system version. So if you don't have PowerShell installed, it will say, I don't know what PowerShell is. And then you know you need to install it. Okay. And you'll have to match up the right version. I do have the download right there so you can click through and download the version of PowerShell for your particular operating system. And then when you are in PowerShell, you can run this PS version table. I shouldn't have closed it out, should I? Uh, so you, you can do a couple of things. I don't have to... I'm so used to being on Windows 2008, Windows 7, and not having PowerShell being as ubiquitous in those operating systems as it is in Windows 8, Windows 2012. Uh, but you see down here at uh, this bottom, there's your PowerShell icon. Uh, it's just embedded by default in Windows 2012. Um, so I can click it right there, and it just launches in a blue window. Uh, and, you know, you can change your fonts and colors, and I probably uh, should make uh, things a little bit... Uh, bigger here for us. And so you can just come over here and take a look at this PS version table. That's all you have to type in. I'll show you a little trick. You can copy and you can actually come over here to PowerShell and you can actually paste into a command prompt or a PowerShell window. If you go up to the top bar, right click and go up here, edit, paste. Kind of a handy trick. I don't know why they hide that. And then you hit enter and it will show you what your version is. Here's your PowerShell version right there, that very first one. Okay. So you need 2.0 or 3.0. Both will work fine for what we're going to do for this course. Okay. And then you can close out of that. Okay. Uh, the second section here is you need a copy of SQL Server 2012. 
I wish I could give you one. Microsoft won't let us distribute the SQL Server 2012 copies. Okay, so you need to go get a copy of that. You can actually download those from the links that I have embedded here, or your organization may have an MSDN license or an old TechNet subscription uh, that you were able to get it before they retired TechNet. Um, so you may be able to uh, get it. Just make sure your SQL Server architecture matches the OS, right? You want the 64-bit edition of SQL Server on the 64-bit edition of your OS. Okay, makes sense. Now, this last part here uh, is about documentation. We are going to make decisions in this exercise and in the next exercise that we will have to refer to later on in the course. So I want you to go open that sample documentation file. Uh, where did I put my exercises? And we were going to start typing in various information. Okay, my server name was SQL01 uh, and the CPU, you can actually find that it's pretty simple to find on almost any of the OS's today. Go to control panel, go to system. And it should tell you all of the goodies right in here. Okay, so just basically transferring this information over here. So my CPU, I have uh, i7 2600k uh, which is a good desktop processor that's not really a server-based uh, processor for this one uh, and i have four processors assigned to this server uh, so intel i7 uh, 2600k and i have four cores okay uh, and then we have memory i had eight gigs of memory my IP4 address, uh, we talk about how to acquire the, if you're not familiar with how to get your IP4 address, you can actually go down, like kind of talks about it. Uh, you can use IP config, right? You see, so go to your DOS prompt. I just hit Windows key and R like Robert and I go to command. Wish I could just say IP config and the window stay up, but it doesn't. And I can just say IP config and I go down and I find my adapter and there's my IP address, okay? So I would document all of that information because we will need that information a little bit later. And I started typing, I didn't have the numlock on. Uh, I'm sure you've probably done that before. Uh, dot 101, was it 101? Zero dot 101, wasn't it? Talking and typing, one dot 101, okay, okay. Is the server part of the domain? Yes, the domain is learn at first.local, and therefore the fully qualified domain name would be sql01.learn at first.local. My operating system uh, was Windows 2012 uh, server standard edition, and I'm on 64 bit. Okay. Now we'll document the rest of these. Notice that we have the two instance information. We're going to come back in the next video. And we'll do those.